Thank you, Sister Kathy. Your first duty elder experience, way to go. Yay. This is the joy of the Lord as well. We're so happy to have you on council. So this morning um, I will, well I have lit the Christ candle here and I will give you God's greeting this morning, grace and mercy and peace to you from him who is and who was and who is to come and from the sevenfold spirit which is before his throne and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead and the ruler of the kings of the earth. And all God's people said, amen. This morning, Jennifer is on the road. She and Ben are on a bit of a road trip. So Carol is stepping in to do the call to worship. So I will switch places with her right now. Good morning. God calls us to worship today and we come, some with laughter and songs of joy some from a sense of obligation or habit, some with hearts heavy with grief, some with distraction or exhaustion, some with eagerness and enthusiasm, some with stress, loneliness, or depression. As God's dearly loved children, we bring all our joy and pain, hurt and hope, to the service of spirit-given grace, love, and hope.
Let's go to God in our prayer of confession this morning. God, you are beyond us in every way. Words cannot contain you. And so sometimes we just sit in silence and contemplate the vastness of who you are without words. And other times we fumble around for our own words or we find beautiful words of scripture to help us to describe the experience of you in our lives. God, at the same time in this moment, we recognize that we have sinned and we have fallen short of your glory in this last week, in this last weekend, this last hour. And sometimes we sit with these sins in silence, maybe too ashamed to name what is so, or maybe we're in silence because we're not even aware of the ways in which we have sinned against you and we need someone to help us see. But today, God, we stumble around with words, words to name our sins because naming them brings them into the light of your forgiveness and into the light of your love. And it begins the healing in our relationships with those against whom we have sinned. And so God, we name our sins of selfishness and greed, our sins of excessive anger and envy. We name the sin of our lust and our apathy. God, it's one thing to name these sins in your presence and in the quiet of our hearts, but we pray that you would give us the courage not only to confess our sins to you, but to confess our sins to one another so that the forgiveness and healing that we experience in our relationship with you can spill over into our relationships with our fellow image bearers. God, we pray that as we confess our sins to one another, that we would be able to both speak our truths of sin in love and listen in love to those who have sinned against us so that we might be ones to offer forgiveness. We pray this in confidence of your assurance and trust that you have forgiven us through the power of the death and resurrection of your son, Jesus Christ. We pray in his name. Amen. Our words of assurance this morning come from 1 John chapter 1, where it says, If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Thanks be to God. So, this morning, I have the opportunity to do the children's message. And so I'm actually just searching on my little phone screen to see if there's any kids that I can see. Oh, I see the Ryan kids. Or the, hi, Ryan kids. Good. I like to be able to see a few kids when I'm doing my children's message. So I want to give a children's message about salt. Can you see that? There's a little bit of a glare. Okay. I want to talk to you about salt. Okay. So... Uh, a couple of months ago, I was making something that we eat a lot in our family, um, tuna turnovers. And I make the dough for the tuna turnovers. And I always double the recipe because we love tuna turnovers so much. We have them usually for the next day as well. So I doubled the recipe, which means that instead of half a teaspoon of salt, which I'll pour right here, half a teaspoon of salt, right? I've got it. Oh, yeah, I already made a big mess. Okay. Half a teaspoon of salt. I needed what? What is one half a teaspoon plus one half a teaspoon? Anybody do the math for me? One half plus one half equals one teaspoon. That's right. Thank you, Gemma. Well, I accidentally did two teaspoons of salt, which is one half plus one half plus one half plus one half. I didn't realize it until I ate a little bit of the dough because I like the dough and I ate the dough sometimes. And I'm like, oh, this is really salty. Oh no. And so I had a double recipe of dough that I had to get rid of because it does not taste good when it has four times the amount of salt in it. Okay. So if that weren't bad enough, 
a few days ago, I was making tuna turnovers again. And I said to myself, as I was putting, I was doubling the recipe again, and I said, don't, don't do more than one teaspoon of salt. You can only do one teaspoon of salt. Don't do two teaspoons of salt. Don't, don't do it. Don't do two teaspoons of salt. And I did two teaspoons of salt again. Even though I was telling myself, don't do two teaspoons of salt, like literally out loud, I was telling myself not to make the same mistake again. Whoops, I did. And so I had to throw away another double batch of dough. So I was thinking about that. And you know, this was a mistake. This wasn't a sin. This was an oopsie. This was a like, whoops mistake. But when there are sometimes that there are sins that we do that we know we shouldn't do them. And sometimes we even tell ourselves, don't do that thing that you always do. Don't do it. We even say it out loud and then we do it anyway. I know I have it. Oh, I can't remember, but not too long ago or probably within the last six months or something, I remember Tim was a little bit late home from work and he hadn't told me or something. And there was probably a very good reason. I'm sure there was. And I said to myself, don't be upset. Don't be upset when he comes home. Just have all sorts of grace and wait for the story before you say anything snarky. Don't get cranky and snarky with him. I told myself to do it. And sure enough, the first look on my face, the first words out of my mouth were like four teaspoons of salt or two teaspoons or quadruple, way too much snarkiness. Um, and so I share this with you to say that Sin is sticky and it's hard. And even sometimes when we know and tell ourselves not to do something, we do it anyway. So if that ever happens to you, kids or adults, where you're telling yourself, don't be mean to your sister, don't slam the door, don't do it. If you even do it, even as you're telling yourself, it is a good clue that this is something that we need to bring to Jesus and ask for his help and his strength. I know the next time I make tuna turnovers, I'm going to think really hard and long and, and pay really close attention and make sure I'm not having any other conversations with anyone at the same time so that I don't make a double batch of two salty turnovers. And instead, I pay close attention. And in the cases of those, those sins that we commit, those times we're not as gracious as God calls us to be or whatever the case may be, that we give that to God and ask for his strength and his help to do the right thing. So, that is my little children's message for you today. Carol is going to come up and she will offer a prayer and read our scripture today from Isaiah chapter 40. We're going to switch places again. Let us pray. Dear Lord, I'd like to thank you for the children today. Thank you for the lesson today and just be with us now as we turn to your word. Help us to understand and grow through it and Heidi's message. In Jesus' name, amen. And today's scripture is from Isaiah 40, uh, verses 21 to 31. Do you not know? Have you not heard? Has it not been told to you from the beginning? Have you not understood since the earth was founded? He sits enthroned above the circle of the earth, and its people are like grasshoppers. He stretches out the heavens like a canopy and spreads them out like a tent to live in. He brings princes to naught and reduces the rulers of this world to nothing. No sooner are they planted, no sooner are they sown, no sooner do they take root in the ground than he blows on them and they wither, and a whirlwind sweeps them away like chaff. To whom will you compare me? Or who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes and look to the heavens. Who created all these? He who brings out the starry host one by one and calls forth each of them by name. Because of his great power and mighty strength, not one of them is missing. Why do you, why do you complain, Jacob? Why do you say, Israel, 
My way is hidden from the Lord. My cause is disregarded by my God. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even the youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. I don't know about each of you, brothers and sisters, but I have had times in the last couple of months that I have just been so weary and so exhausted. I was watching a video um, about a month ago, and it was a, a woman pastor who was talking about the all of the spiritual and emotional dynamics of returning to worship inside the church building. And she talked about how for a lot of us, our resilience, our level of resilience has depleted. And I thought, oh, that's it. I felt so seen and so heard when she said that, because I, I feel like that's what's been happening for me. Like I like to think of myself as a pretty resilient person, right? Hard things happen. I bounce back. You know, I, I think of resilience as a muscle that the more you use it, the, the stronger it gets. And if you keep having hard times, you keep accessing that resilience, you keep going. We talk about resilience in our kids and how amazingly resilient they are. They go through tough, tough times and they, they bounce back and and we want to build that resilience in our kids and ourselves. Um, but I think there's something about the constantly changing systems around us, right? That our foundations are shaking in a lot of those different systems and rules keep changing and the situation keeps changing all around us and decisions that have to be made over and over again and then remade and reshaped. And when you go through that enough, and I'm thinking about our teachers and administrators in schools as well, and anyone who owns a business. When you go through that enough, um, your, your resilience, your, your bounce can just kind of fall. And, and your capacity to, to bounce back lessens and decreases. And, and I've recognized that in myself, just this feeling of not bouncing back, not being able to get back on top of things. And... Last week, I was talking with um, a dear friend of our family, one of my mom's best friends. She and her husband are, um, her husband's a pastor, and, and his wife, um, they, they are dear friends of my parents and friends of our family. And she was asking me how she could pray for me in the midst of all that's going on in my life. And I said, you know what? In the big things, I'm doing okay, right? We're returning back to in-person worship next week, Sunday. We've got a great team. We're, we're working hard and well together. I'm okay with that. Um, my dissertation that I'm working on, you know what? That's going to come together. It's going to happen. I've had some good progress. I'm doing okay there. That's a big thing that's going all right. My mom's health situation, yes, this is tough, but our family is close and we're leaning on each other. I feel solid in that as well. So it's not the big things that I need prayer for so much, though. So, Feel free to pray for those things. It's the little things. It's the little things that come my way and are all of a sudden in my path. And I find myself stumbling and tripping over little things. And instead of responding with grace, I'm reacting with frustration or annoyance or anger in ways that do not befit a daughter of the king, you know? And I just said, please pray for those little things, those little ways in which I'm stumbling and falling. Because even though they may seem little, sometimes the little ways that we trip 
can have disastrous consequences. So yes, I just talked a little bit about me and my situation, but I'm so curious about each of you. And I, I wonder how you're doing. I have heard that some of you are doing great. Okay, and I just wanna celebrate that. You're at the top of your game, you got energy, you're feeling resilient and bouncy. Awesome, share your strength with others, they need you. But there are some of you, and I've heard you say, some of you are feeling weary and, and you are exhausted. And you're stumbling and tripping, not over mountains and valleys, but over those little pebbles in your path and little cracks in the sidewalk. There are difficult things going on in your life, big things and little things. Maybe some of you are still working from home and you're having a hard time still getting done the things you used to be able to get done. Or some of you, your kids are going back to school and you're navigating that or they're doing online learning and or they're back at school and you're imagining they're probably gonna to have to come home at some point and do remote schooling again and just bracing yourself for that potentiality. Or maybe there are some of you who don't have kids in school at all or you're past the age of, of working, but maybe you've, you've gotten a new health diagnosis and it would have been hard all by itself, but to be going through the doctor appointments without being able to see your doctor in person, maybe you're doing a lot of phone calls or having to go in for treatment and wearing masks and all the complexities as you follow protocols for your appointments. It just makes it so much harder. And you're concerned about your immune system and who you're coming into contact with. There is exhaustion and sometimes it feels like too much. No matter what our age, right? Even youths, it says in Isaiah 40, even young people grow tired and weary and young men and young women stumble and fall. None of us is invincible. None of us is immune to the effects of the brokenness in this world. A commentator I read said that those words, even youths grow tired and weary and young men stumble and fall, have the chill of death about them. And I thought, ah, that is so true. That is so true. I've often thought about this pandemic and how the chill of death pervades it. Maybe you're not afraid of dying, but there's something chilly about this experience. When I think about the distance that we are to keep from one another, all the signs that are up, two meters or six feet. Six feet between you and another living person. Six feet is the distance that we're buried in the ground when we die. Six feet, I often think, is the distance of death. And there is a chilliness about the distance even that we are to keep from each other in this time. There, there is the chill of death about the reality of the stumbles and the falls of our lives. And in the midst of all of that, we can sometimes feel forgotten. We can feel like our cause is disregarded by God. He's not thinking of us. He doesn't care about us. He's not taking care of us. He doesn't care about what we need. Isaiah has words for us this morning. Isaiah had words for the Israelite exiles who were living in a situation that was also unstable, systems that kept changing, a land, a territory, a time that was unfamiliar to them. God's words for us today are that he is, is the everlasting God. He is the creator of the universe. So much beauty in the words that, that Carol read this morning, how he spreads out the heavens like a tent. I thought how appropriate for our Charleston Lake folks who are camping and tenting and not with us here this morning, but might be catching this later on YouTube. God spreads out the heavens. He's, he's made the starry hosts and he calls each of those stars by name. God has made every bit of creation and nothing is missing. And God is mighty and God is strong. And God understands this world. God understands you. 
and what you're going through. God understands me. God gets it. God gets us. God gets the world. And God does not get tired. God does not grow weary. And God has regard for all of our causes and he knows all of our ways. And God in God's abundance gives strength to the weary and gives power to the weak. God activates our resilience. It says in verse 31, God renews our strength. I love the Hebrew word for renews in Isaiah 40. The Hebrew word is halaf. And in its form here, it means to exchange or to substitute or to trade. God trades. He does a trade. You want to trade? Let's trade. You give me your weakness and your exhaustion and your lack of resilience, and I will give you my strength. And how do we get that? How do we get that trade to happen? Who is the broker? What is the broker for that trade? That trade happens when we wait on the Lord, when we place our hope and trust in the Lord, when we stop relying on ourselves for everything and we admit to God that we can't, that we are merely human, that we are exhausted, that we cannot do it on our own. And what's more, we are sinful creatures who stumbles and falls aren't just little oopsie daisies like too much salt, but our, our sins that hurt people and hurt ourselves and hurt this world, we cannot hold it all together. And we wait on the Lord and we put our trust in the Lord and we admit to the Lord that we cannot do it. Now, that's the trade. And I was thinking about trades that we... We give to God our weakness, and God gives to us God's strength. And I thought, what a weird trade, right? Like when you're thinking about making a trade, usually you're trading something that you value for something else that you value a little bit more, but you're trading a good thing for a good thing usually, right? You're trading in something, and then that other per person or party finds value in the thing that you're giving and gives you something that they value. I think about when I was little and we traded marbles on the playground, right? this marble for that marble so that we could mix it up and ha all have marbles that we wanted or sticker trading or whatever it was that we trade. It seems strange at first glance to think of our weakness as something that has any value to God at all. It doesn't seem like an even trade. It's not a good trade, but it is for two reasons. First of all, our exhaustion actually comes from a place of something we value very much. We value our self-sufficiency. We value being able to do it all on our own. And it is very, very hard for us to give that up. So when we give that up, we are actually giving up something that we value. And when we trade it for God's strengths, we're giving up something we value. And this weakness of ours, when we admit it and we hand it over to God, that is valuable to God. God wants that. God wants to trade. He wants to exchange that. Our admitting our weakness and our waiting on God is something that is valuable to God. So it is a good trade. We give God our weakness, admit we can't do it on our own, and God trades, substitutes, exchanges, gives us God's abundant strength. And we receive that when we wait on the Lord. Another Hebrew word here, I love it, the Hebrew word for waiting and trusting and hoping in the Lord is the word kava. And it's translated here as wait and, or trust or hope, depending on what translation you use. And that's, that's great. That's, that's the, the figurative meaning of that word. But like so many words in the Hebrew language, there's kind of a figurative meaning. And then there's like a, a bodily physical meaning underneath that figurative meaning. Like remember when, when I told you about how God regretted that he had made humans, the, 
the word was regret, but the, the physical sense underneath that word regret, the bodily sense was a sigh, God sighed when he thought about having made humanity and all of the, the evil that they'd come to. So waiting, kava, waiting on the Lord, trusting in the Lord. The physical sense underneath that is the sense of binding together, perhaps by twisting. Oh, that's good. Think about that. The next time you wait on the Lord, you are binding yourself, almost like twisting together yourself with the Lord. You know, the image that comes to mind for me is Jacob wrestling with God on the shores of Jabbok River, wrestling with God, holding on to God, twisting himself up with, with the angel of the Lord, the presence of God, and holding on so tight and saying as the dawn was coming, I will not let you go until you bless me. When you are so exhausted and you are so tired, waiting on the Lord is like a twisting yourself up with the Lord and holding on tight and saying, I will not let you go because I trust that you are going to bless me with the strength and the power and the resilience that comes from you. And when we do that, somehow, some way, we receive the strength to keep on moving, to keep on moving forward. That is the image of the end of Isaiah 40, is a movement forward. There are three images. There's the image of soaring on wings like eagles, the image of running and not growing weary, the image of walking and not fainting. And all of these are images of moving along in the direction that God is calling us to move. And maybe the resilience that God gives you today, that you need today, that I need today, is going to just mount you up and you are going to majestically soar through whatever is ahead of you. Praise God for that resilience and that strength that God is going to give you. Or maybe it's a running strength. You are going to swiftly move through what you need to move through. Or maybe it is the strength of walking and simply placing one foot in front of the other. Maybe that is the movement and the strength that you are being given today. But you know what? There are some of you on this call, or maybe you know someone, you're on this call and you know someone who isn't very interested <laughs> and moving forward. And, and I mean this, I mean, there could be a lot of reasons people are interested in moving forward, but perhaps there are some of you who are nearing the end of your life. And it's not so much about soaring and running or even doing a good walk anymore. Perhaps you need to hear that the same one who pours abundant strength into you is the one who is the shepherd that Isaiah 40 talks about earlier in this chapter. The one who tends his flock like a shepherd, the one who takes the sheep, perhaps that have stumbled, perhaps that have fallen, and it says carries them close to his heart and says, you know what? You ain't moving right now. Let me carry you. That word in Hebrew Halaf, that in its form here means to exchange or to trade. In its most basic form, it means to pass on or to pass through or to pass by or to come anew. All of that in one little word. And I thought, as I learned that reading the Hebrew dictionary this week, that that is death, isn't it? That there is a passing on, a passing by, a passing through, and a coming anew, all in that movement. And isn't it true that death is really ultimately the ultimate exchange, the ultimate trade, where we trade our death for the life to come, where we exchange 
the life that we have lived here for the eternal and everlasting life that is to come. And I know this is probably on the far horizon for a lot of you, but many of you who have lost loved ones and you have seen them cross over, pass through, pull off, exchange, make that trade from one life to the next, or perhaps you're anticipating that right now. And I pray for you that you might walk as a child of the light through the veil, that you would run the race and finish the race marked out for you, that you would rise up on eagle's wings and fly to Jesus. That you would fly to Jesus and live. And he will raise you up on eagle's wings, bear you on the breath of dawn, Make you to shine like the sun and hold you in the palm of his hand. Let's pray together. Dear God, for whatever exhaustion, weariness, tiredness that we are experiencing today. Let us together, God, hear the voice of your son, Jesus, when he said, come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. God, we need you so that we can rest, and we need you so that we can work Whatever it is that you are calling us to do, whether flying or running or walking, whatever, whatever challenge, whatever vocation is in this day, whether it be a relationship that needs work, whether it be the tasks, the, the to-do list that's in front of us, whether, whether it be the call to die, whatever it is, God, we pray that we would find our resilience in you, that we would soar on wings like eagles, that we would run and not grow weary, that we would walk and not be faint, that we would exchange and trade our weariness for your, your strength and your power. We pray in the precious and powerful name of Jesus. Amen. We'll sing together a song that we probably haven't, we haven't sung together before, but it's a song my girls and I recorded for KCS this spring, and it's based on this verse. May we soar together.
Amen. Thank you, Brother John. I have to admit, when your when your picture came up and you it looked like you were in here, I was like, wait a minute, how did John it's get creepy. in here? No, I Very close. Oh. Uh, oh dear, what's happening? Oh, do I need to turn off? Sorry. Can you hear me? They can hear us through that. Okay. Whoa. Wait. <laughs> I'm really confused. There's so much confusion going on. So, you know, this is better. This is even better. So, today we are celebrating your 15 years of coordination, which is actually Friday, September 18th, but we thought we'd surprise you today. So, on behalf of Council and the and, uh, Westside Fellowship, we'd like to present you with these flowers. Whoa. And a card. Um, I did not, whoa, did not see that coming. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. And anybody else that would like to send Heidi a note or a card or anything like that, feel free. This is on behalf of all of us, but uh, mm -hmm. next month is Pastor Appreciation Month. Oh. There's lots of time. And we'd also like to mark it on the family Bible. Wow. Should we do that now? For next week? Right I thought we'd do it right we now. We should do it right That's now. That's we got Tim on camera. Oh, Tim's doing it. Yep. Okay. So you want me to go over here? Okay. So confused. <laughs> I yeah, wonder we really why we were like doing something in the Bible earlier. Was so, it the bird? Yeah, so Tim had said that on the day of your ordination, we thought of on Luke 10, and it talks about Jesus sitting at, or, uh, sitting at Jesus' feet and learning from him. So and Tim was mentioning that the message was also about Jesus basically inviting a woman to become a, a preacher and a spiritual leader, and that's not the norm, of course, okay. back in that day. So as Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister. Uh, called Mary, which I say Martha, Mary. Anyway, mm -hmm. so I came Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet, listening to what he said. So we're gonna put it right here. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I didn't know this. Do you want to? Yeah, all the time. And we won't put that in there, but the 15 year, the 15 year anniversary of your ordination. That is so beautiful. Thank and we're gonna have a prayer. Okay. Normally, everyone would come up. And lay their hands on you, but we're gonna have your bubble come. So Carol, my bubble. bubble. Yeah, and Carol, the Tim Campus is recording. <laughs> Lord, we bring before you your servant Heidi. We celebrate this milestone of 15 years of coordination and a lifetime of serving you. Thank you for bringing her here to us at Westside. She has been here with us for eight years now, and we have been so blessed by her. We ask that you continue to bless her and her work. May she be a great beacon of your love and make her works always be pleasing to you. Bless her family too, Lord. Tim, Samara, Naomi, and Zoe. Thank you for them. In Jesus' name, amen. Congratulations. Um, thank you. Whoa. Did not see that coming. And I should probably go back over there. Thank you. Thank you, Hillary. So much. Okay, I'll go. Should I switch? Unmute. Okay, I think I got it now. Okay. Well, okay, I'm still like a little surprised there. It has been a great 15 years and over half of it with Westside, right? Because I've been here for eight years. So um, I'm so thankful to have been here and I'm pretty flummoxed and flabbergasted and don't know quite what to say. So thank you. I look forward to all the celebrations that are ahead. And uh, next week is going to be one of those big celebrations. Um, we're adding in-person worship to our Zoom worship. So Zoom will still be here. It'll look a little different because um, the camera will be farther back and you'll see what's happening on stage um, or on the, 
on the platform up here. So you'll get emails this week about signing up. You can already sign up, go to our website. There's a little link to, to sign up already. Um, we have no idea how many people are coming. If we blow the numbers out of the water, um, we will change how we figure things out to make sure we have capacity for as many as possible and give everyone an equitable chance to, um, to, to join the service. So please respond, RSVP, um, everything you need is on the website and will be in the email that comes as well. Um, today also, as John David prayed, uh, we give offerings today for Westside and also for our denominational work together, highlighting the work of Resonate Global Missions, used to be called Christian Reformed World Missions. We sponsor specifically missionaries and we'll be switching that sponsorship as, um, as Alice retires and finding someone else to sponsor as well. But this giving um, through denominational ministry shares is toward generally towards the denomination and uh, their work with Resonate. You can give online on the Bridge app um, or drop off a check or any other way. You've been so generous in so many ways. So we thank you for your generosity. Um, I'm sure I'm forgetting something because my brain is all salts. Do we need more salts? I don't know what I'm doing. Okay. We will change the light. I know that is what is next. So, brothers and sisters, this light here is in one place. Perhaps you've lit a light in your, a candle in your home. Um, and at this time, there's always a little bit of sadness as we extinguish the light, but we're not really extinguishing the light because the light of Christ is always with us. We are moving light from one place into many places as we go out into our world this week. So we'll change the light. And here, God's blessing over you. Brothers and sisters, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and all peace so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. And all God's people said, Amen. We're going to sing the doxology together. And after that, you may stick around for breakout rooms um, just to say hello to more of your brothers and sisters in Christ. So let's sing together. Praise God.